We're going to show you next a little bit of a sneak peek of a brand new CBC documentary. It is called Big News. It premieres today on CBC Gem, so you can stream it as of today. You're going to see in this doc the way U.S. news media stoke partisan division in the U.S., how social media, how fake news and mistrust have politicized the pandemic, have politicized protest. Here's an excerpt of today's documentary. <laughs> I think we underestimate the power of the media to shape our world views. We were no longer consuming the same story. People only want to watch what they already agree with. We are so polarized that we will polarize around absolutely anything. We're moving ever closer to this cliff. Done. When the coronavirus came along, you desperately needed to know the truth. I disagree. You're wearing you a mask. You can have your thoughts. I'm not you have mine. to wear a mask. I disagree. I, it's science. They're simply incapable of reporting on the country in ways that a lot of people in the country would understand. Big news from the documentary. Look who's with us this morning, our senior correspondent in Washington, Paul Hunter. My heart is pounding from, from that promo. I mean, obviously, it is a very dramatic documentary, but it gets to some very important issues. And Paul is with us this morning to talk about things. Good morning and, and welcome back. Nice to see Good you, to Paul. Good to be back, Heather. Long time no see. I know. I was thinking it was Inauguration Day, January 20th, that we last saw you. And we're going to talk about some of the things that relate to that. But let me get, get your perspective overall. This documentary, what, what you see it's trying to do, because part of your work is part of this, but uh, what you see the documentary is trying to do and how it mirrors what you have experienced and witnessed in your 10 years covering the U.S. political scene? Such a, such a small, simple question, Heather. <laughs> you know, I, I hear your voice in it for a snippet. Uh, there's a snippet of me, a snippet of our friend Steve D'Souza, but mostly it looks at the, the U.S. media and the sort of what it really tries to do is connect the dots to explain or try to how we got to where we are right now, which is, you know, a place where people don't trust the news, where people don't know where to find the news and what to think of it when they see it. How did we get here? How did this country, society, get to a place where it is so polarized, where there aren't conversations anymore, there are just angry shouting matches among politicians, among media? How do people find the truth? How did we get here? It tracks, it goes back to the dawn of public broadcasting, but mostly looks really at the last 20, 30 years. Uh, during the rise of this period that, again, gets us to the point where we are now. It's quite a doc. I've watched the whole thing. That was yes. a great little promo. Um, it's about an hour long. It's, um, it's instructive and it's kind of sobering, you know, because we've come to, you know, the world was at a point where they thought, you know, all information will come from the news. And now the news is questioned, doubted, not believed by millions of people. And that's a challenge for democracy. I want to play a little clip for you, Paul, and it's not from the documentary, but it just speaks to how the current president, Joe Biden, is dealing with the climate that exists presently and how people don't believe that they are getting the truth. So let's watch this and then we'll we'll bring it back to the, uh, the discussion. Last summer, I was in Philadelphia and I met a small business owner, a woman. I asked her, I said, what do you need most? Never forget what she said to me. She said, looking me in the eye, she said, I just want the truth. The truth. Just tell me the truth. Think of that. My fellow Americans, you're owed nothing less than the truth. So as he addressed the American population there in that uh, primetime special, I just want the truth. When? When did that departure occur, Paul? 
You know, I thought there was a remarkable moment uh, in Biden's speech uh, that night a couple of weeks ago. Um, you kind of hear that from people all the time. You know, if, if I'm going out talking to, you know, regular people, uh, it's interesting. The last, I would say the last 10, 15 years, people want to know who you work for. Uh, what's your agenda? Do you have an agenda? What is your network about? What is your story about? Because people, they are wary of bias. They are wary of non-truths. And, and like, you know, the woman in Joe Biden's story, people just want the truth and they don't know how to find it. You know, in the documentary, to me, there, there's a couple of turning points in all of this. There's the rise of Fox News. There's Donald Trump and, and the repetition of fake news and all that kind of stuff. But at one point, the documentary looks at um, the, the program Crossfire, if you remember that, mm -hmm. um, where they would get somebody on, on the left and somebody on the right and have what was ostensibly a debate and what ostensibly presented as a kind of news and information program. Um, but what the documentary underlines is that it was, it, was, it was an us versus them. It was a this team versus that team. And that that isn't really helpful. They, they show a John Stewart clip where he calls them out on this. Um, and what that program led to was a polarization of people. It's us versus them. There's no middle ground. You know, I, I talk to journalism students a lot uh, over, over the course of years, and I have often made the point that, that you'll encounter a tension to be, you know, one side or the other, because that's somehow sexier. The, 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 the tension in that is, makes for a sexier, more interesting story. But, right. But the truth is usually somewhere in the middle, and your job is to get to the truth. Sometimes, all the time, that's not black or white, that's gray. Your job is to make that story interesting and valuable, but that's what the news is about, the truth, and get to the truth. So get away from the this side or that side and the shouting matches that can ensue. It may be entertaining to watch, but it's at the end of the day, it, it may not be valuable for people that are just trying to get information. So interesting when you talk about the polarization and then the fact, I mean, as we heard in that promo clip, that people only are interested in listening what they already believe. You know, they're not listening and learning to the other side or talking to the other side, or it's that echo chamber mentality that continues. I want to bring back, we saw that image very briefly, but when you bring in fake news, this, the phrase that we all know, uh, alternative facts, I think back to that from 2017, that was a key turning point moment, I would imagine. But with the election of Donald Trump and then now of late, the pandemic. Here's the picture that we're going to look at, you know, that where he returns from the hospital after having been treated for COVID-19 and makes that triumphant return up the steps of the White House. Uh, just bear with me. We're going to look at that image again. Oh, it is a clip. Sorry, Paul, we'll watch this and we'll talk about it in just a second. Sure. So, sorry, there is no sound there. Yeah, th there's the image. And then that Cam, you can see the bulbs flashing, he's up the stairs, and there he is, and he takes off the mask. How has all of that, Trump and the pandemic, how has it all exacerbated things? Well, you know, there's another, you know, another, I think, um, instructive moment in the documentary uh, uh, where it's Leslie Stahl from 60 Minutes talking with Donald Trump about his sort of perpetual um, disparaging of the news and, you know, the you know, fake news, et cetera. And he says, she recounts that he tells her that he says that so that people will believe him, not people who are filtering his message or, or saying what they want about him. They will only believe him. I've, I've you know, thought for a long time the two most powerful uh, words in his lexicon were fake news. And he, I've been to places where he will do that at those rallies, and then people will turn and do the CNN sucks, you know, to the media pen in the middle. And he creates, he, again, builds on this you're on one team or the other. You're either with me or you're with the, the, you know, the enemy of the people, the media, as he put it. And you know, we talk about the bully pulpit that the president has. When you say this often enough, as president, people tend to believe it, right? And that's a challenge for the media. I mean, we've got to do our job. We've got to call that out. We've got to fact check. We've got to tell stories. We've got to demonstrate what the other side is. But it's complicated and it's hard because that's a very powerful position to be in as president. You know, even you know, during COVID, for example, when he comes out and he starts talking about you know, hydroxychloroquine or bleach or sunlight, and by he, I mean the, any president, right? How, how do you 
how do you know what the truth is, even as a journalist? Maybe he heard something in the Oval Office that he can't really explain. He's not at liberty to or whatever, or is it just wrong? Or is yes. it a false information? Or is it a lie? You don't know, and how do you get to that? It's kind of circular in the end, but it has become a complicated thing to do, it, 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 you know, to cover politics in this country in the last 10, 15 years. So let's look to consequences in the future, and I'm going to ask for some footage of what we saw on January the 6th. When you talk about the presidential bully pulpit, and you can see in these pictures of the Capitol riots, you see how people responded to what the president said, the consequences of this kind of, uh, of, this kind of discussion, then it makes you wonder, again, in, in, in conjunction with this documentary, Paul, the consequences of this debate and in this kind of messaging, and how on earth do we ever get it back? Look, Heather, the thing is, the other, I think, failure of big media, the, the industry, not the documentary, um, is for too long, too many news organizations um, ignored too many voices in America. You know, the reason the us versus them grabbed hold is because people outside of New York, people outside of the Washington Beltway, people outside of Los Angeles, outside the major media centers, felt, I think rightly, that their voices were not a part of the conversation um, about life in America, about politics in America. They didn't show up on the big news shows, and thus they felt left out. And so when someone comes along who promises them to make their country great again, uh, that's an easy thing to want to be mm -hmm. a part of because nobody else is listening to you. And I think one of the points that the documentary underlines is that that was a failure of media to reflect all voices in America. And we're all sort of paying the price for that now. Lessons for so many in all of this. Paul, thank you for that wisdom and that experience shared and uh, we'll appreciate Hearing your voice, I didn't know I had a snippet in there too. We're all part of it as of today. Uh, thank you, Paul Hunter, our senior correspondent from Washington. And that CBC News original documentary, again, big news, available right now. You can stream it on CBC Gem.